Hi everyone. Uh, in the part one video on figures having two axes of symmetry or multiple axes of symmetry, I missed a very important point. And I'm going to discuss that point in this video tutorial. Therefore, this video tutorial is in continuation to the part one. And those of you who haven't watched the part one, please go to the playlist and watch the part one video and then come and watch this, this part so that you can better understand what we will discuss here. In the part one video, I said that in case of square, we'll have only two axes of symmetry. We'll have only two axes of symmetry. One will be this one, that is a line passing from the midpoints of these two opposite sides. And one will be this one, that is passing a line passing from the midpoints of these two opposite sides. But we'll have two more axes of symmetry. How? If I pass a line from these two opposite vertices, If this line is passing from these two opposite vertices and it is actually a diagonal, this is what? A diagonal of this square. This will also act as axis of symmetry. Because this particular line Forget about this one and this one for a moment. Just focus on this line. This line is dividing this square into two equal halves. One half, another half, and these two halves are mirror images of each other. Why? Because if you try to fold this square or this figure around this line, if you try to fold it, this one here and this one to here, then these two equal halves will exactly overlap with each other. That is, this vertex and this vertex on being folded will, you know, just come at a single point, will overlap with each other. This side and this side will overlap and this side and this side is overlap. So, these two equal halves are mirror images of each other. Therefore, this will be another axis of symmetry. Now, we have three axes of symmetry. But in the same way, we will have one more axis of symmetry and that will be this one. Okay, that is passing from here. Same thing in this case also. These two halves, just focus on this line, forget about all the other three lines. If this is a line and if you look at this equal half and this equal half, are these mirror images? Yes, because in the case of a square, when you fold the square figure around its diagonal, then it will simply will overlap with each other and therefore making that two equal halves mirror images. Okay? And therefore this will be another axis of symmetry. So now we have the fourth axis of symmetry, the fourth one also. So we have total four axes of symmetry in case of a square. What about in case of rectangle? Well, in rectangle, we discussed that this will be the one passing from the midpoints of these two opposite sides. This axis, this line will be another line of symmetry or axis of symmetry passing from these two midpoints of the opposite sides. But will in this case, the diagonals will also, will in this case diagonals be axis of symmetry, like what we saw here? No. If we draw a line connecting these two opposite sides, that is, it's tracing the diagonal, then actually you are not getting two mirror images. Because if you try to fold these two halves, like this portion and this portion, if we try to fold these two portions, 
around this line, then these two portions will not exactly overlap with each other. Therefore, they will not be mirror images of each other. If you don't have mirror images, it means that your figure will not be symmetrical around that line. Yes, it is symmetrical around this line because if you fold this portion and this portion, then they are going to exactly overlap with each other. Even in this case, if you fold this portion and this portion, then this vertex will overlap with each other and this vertex and this vertex will overlap with each other, making it mirror images. But not in this case. Okay, If you fold it, then these two vertices will not overlap with each other. Similarly, in this case, this another diagram, you're not going to get another axis of symmetry around this line. So, in case of rectangle, you'll have only two axes of symmetry. But in the case of square, you'll have four. That is, in case of square, you have actually multiple axes of symmetry. similar to what we discussed here in the case of circle and here in the case of triangle triangle square and circle these are figures having multiple axes of symmetry that is greater than two axes of symmetry 